My name is Philip Swanson, and I'm passionate about the environment. I'm the administrator of the CCAC Oil and Gas Methane Partnership. Burning natural gas produces much less carbon dioxide than burning oil or coal. Along the way to the burner, however, some gas escapes. Gas is mainly methane, and gram for gram, methane is over 80 times more potent in the atmosphere than carbon dioxide over a 20-year time horizon. Methane is invisible to the naked eye, but it can be seen with a special kind of infrared camera called an optical gas imaging camera. In order for gas to be widely accepted as more climate-friendly than coal, companies producing, processing, and transporting gas need to ensure that methane leaks are kept to a minimum. Unfortunately, the oil and gas sector is generally considered to be the largest man-made emitter of methane after agriculture. There are potentially thousands of points in a field or plant where emissions could occur. One recent study suggests that worldwide about 3% of produced gas was emitted to the atmosphere in 2012. That's equivalent to the production of Norway that year. The International Energy Agency identified reducing upstream emissions as one of five key climate policy priorities in the energy sector if we want to limit the Earth's temperature rise to less than 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Gas is emitted at different points in the chain, from oil and gas production through gas processing, pipeline transportation. Some emissions are leaks, others are part of the way equipment is designed to operate. Some equipment and operating procedures are more climate friendly than others. The few measurement studies that have been done in the sector mostly have focused on the United States. And these have shown wide variations across regions and even within the same company. The studies also show that a small share of facilities can account for a large share of total emissions. And within those facilities, a small share of sources can account for the bulk of the problem. The difficulty is finding the right facilities and the right sources at those facilities. The CCAC Oil and Gas Methane Partnership was designed after a year and a half of consultations with industry, NGOs, and investors. We came to the conclusion that in order for companies to ensure that they are detecting the main emissions, they need to survey their operations in a systematic manner. The initiative was designed to provide companies a systematic approach for detecting and addressing their methane emissions, and just as importantly, provide them with a mechanism to demonstrate this to stakeholders. This is done through the public reporting requirement. The last point is important. Some companies, they feel that they have the problem under control, but they're looking for a way to demonstrate this in a credible manner. Many international jurisdictions currently have very weak regulatory and enforcement capacity, so a voluntary initiative is a way to reach these jurisdictions for now. The initiative focuses on nine core emission sources. These are the ones that have been found to account for a large portion of methane emissions in typical upstream oil and gas operations. In a nutshell, this initiative is about surveying for and addressing these nine core sources and reporting on the results. The good news is that mitigation projects usually have relatively low upfront costs and quick payback periods. These are some of the most cost-effective greenhouse gas reduction projects you can do in the sector. But you need to find the emissions first, and to do that, you need to survey your operations using a systematic approach. And you need to assure your stakeholders that this is what you're doing. The CCAC Oil and Gas Methane Partnership offers companies a way to do this. It's good for business and it's good for the environment.